Uh, it was about uh, five years ago that uh, I was at a, a family's home for supper. This is in Ottawa, a part of our church at that time, and I was getting to know them a little bit, and their, their kids are a lovely Christian family, and, the, and I was getting to know some of the kids. Their oldest child was a, was a boy. He was 18 years old, young man, I guess, and uh, he, has his, he had his pilot license. He just got his license, and uh, he flew these little, little planes. And I said, oh, that's great. I'd love to fly sometime with you. Not really meaning it. I just was being polite. And, uh, and he says, well, how about this Saturday? I'm going up on Saturday. And uh, so I gulped a little bit. And I said, yeah, sure. Okay, let's do that. And uh, so that day came, and I uh, went uh, to the airport, and we went into the plane, and he has this big, long list of all the things that you have to do before you fly, the checklist and everything, and we put on the headset, and we were able to talk to each other, and as we were going to the runway, just about to lift off, I had this very sinking feeling, it says, I am placing my life into this guy's hands that I, that I know very little about. I mean, when I when, when, the, when he asked me if I wanted to fly with him, I looked at his parents. I was waiting for them to say, don't go, don't go, you know. <laughs> but they didn't say that, so I figured it must be okay. Uh, but as I was going, I was thinking, man, this, this could be it. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it or not, but here I am placing my life into this guy's hands. And, uh, and of course, we, we were able to take off, and, and it was fairly easy to take off. And it was kind of exciting. It was at nighttime. We were flying over the city of Ottawa and the lights of the city, and you could see the river, and, and it was actually quite beautiful, and it was quite something. Uh, but there was a wind that was uh, developing as we were up in the, in the air, and, uh, and, and the, the plane started to shake, and it started to rattle, and, you know, bob up and down, and, and it's not like a commercial airliner where you can kind of navigate through that a little bit better. And, and you're sitting right, you know, you're, you're right at the front, where the windshield, and all you can see is, is just air and, and the ground. And I'm thinking to myself, this plane is going to rip apart and I'm going to, it's just the end of me, you know, kind of thing. And uh, so, so I said, it's, is this normal? <laughs> and he said, uh, yeah, it's a little windy. So, uh, so as we're flying and I, and I see him going towards another airport, a different airport that we took off on. And, uh, and he asked for permission to land. And I said, oh, good, finally this guy has enough sense to know when to pack it in. And so we're going down to the, uh, to the runway, and, and we touch down, and there's just a sigh of relief inside of me. But then he guns it again, and he takes off. And I said, well, what, what's going on? <laughs> and he said, uh, oh, I'm just practicing my touch and go. And I said, what? Touch and go? I'll, I'll show you touch and go, you know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so we, we did that a couple of times even, and, uh, but fortunately I'm, I'm still alive, I'm still here, and we made it, and uh, actually it was, it was quite thrilling to, to have that experience. But it got me thinking about, about how this relates to my, my spiritual life. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you remember, may, have, may, may remember that I asked you, who is driving? You know, is Jesus in the passenger seat or is Jesus behind the wheel? Is he driving? And so I'm going to ask the same kind of question with a little bit of a twist, and that is, who's flying this thing? Uh, who's the pilot? And uh, can you trust him? Uh, I think that's kind of a question that we could ask almost every morning when we get up. We say to ourselves, okay, who's flying? Can I trust him? Does he have competence? Can he actually do it? Does he have the character that is necessary in which I feel comfortable in being able to place my, my destiny in the hands of this pilot? And, and, and when you place your faith in something or someone, there's always an element of risk, right? I mean, that's, there's no faith without risk. I mean, that, that's by definition, that's what it means. We, there's a risk involved. And when there's risk involved, there's also fear and sometimes even failure in the midst of all that. So do you have the faith that it takes to trust whoever it is that is piloting your life? As long as it's Jesus, I trust. <laughs> so this week I was thinking about this as I was looking at Matthew chapter 14. Matthew, 14, Matthew chapter 14 is a story about Jesus walking on water. We're probably, very, most of us are familiar with that story. It's a famous story. And, and we have this, the evening begins with Jesus 
take, making the disciples go into the boat and go into the water while he goes into a mountainside to, to go off to pray. And in verse 24 of chapter 14, it says there's a storm that develops, and it's so powerful and so strong that it says that these disciples couldn't make it to land. They were, they were stuck, and these are professional sailors. And, and then all of a sudden, Jesus starts walking on water in the midst of this storm. So I want you to kind of visualize this. I have a little video that uh, will show a, an image of a boat that's going through rough waters. And uh, I don't know how you feel about this. Have you ever been in a storm like this? And maybe this even gives you a little bit of the you know, seasick as you're watching this. The, the boat makes it, by the way. But can you imagine being on that boat? Can you imagine the waves and the wind and the rain pelting you and, and how that would make you feel? And, and this is, you know, Matthew uses the word, they were tor- the boat was tortured. That's the actual word that he uses. The boat was tortured by the waves. So maybe he felt like it was going to capsize or break apart or something, but the disciples were absolutely terrified. They were, they were wet, they were cold, they were, uh, they were exhausted, and they were terrified. And it was under these conditions that Peter stepped out of the boat to walk on water. Now, I, I've been on uh, small boats before over the, over the years and uh, never been in that kind of a storm. Uh, although a couple of years ago, we were in the Philippines visiting my son. We were taking a boat, it was reasonably small, and going in the ocean from one island to the next. And, and the, it was a clear day and water was fine, but all of a sudden there was this huge wave that came. I have no idea why it came. I don't know what the source was. But the captain saw it come and he cut the engines, slowed right down, and all of a sudden the boat went shoo, like this. And waves and the water came in the, over the sides of the boat. We got wet. And it was at that moment that I was thinking to myself, hey, I should try out my walking on water skills. <laughs> no, of course not. That's not what I was thinking at all. What I was really thinking of is that I got to hold on to this boat as tight as possible. Oh, yeah, and there goes my wife. I better hold on to her, too. <laughs> I was desperately trying to hang on to security and, and not thinking at all about getting out of the boat. Can you imagine? It takes a lot of courage to think about getting out of the boat on a clear, sunny day, let alone getting out of the boat when the waves are high, it's torturing your boat, the wind is strong, and, uh, and it's dark, it's like between 3 and 6 o'clock in the morning, and then you decide to get out of the boat? And yet that's what Peter did. He gets out of the water, and he falls. He sinks. He doesn't make it. It's a story of failure, right? Isn't that the way we normally think about it? Peter fails. And even the question that Jesus asked kind of confirms it. He says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? I have this kind of a love-hate relationship with Peter, don't you? Like Peter is one of these guys that, that comes up with some great stuff and then all of a sudden he has this great failure. And I, and I can identify with that at times. And, and the question is, yeah, did Peter fail? But let's think about this. Have, have any of you ever failed before? Raise your hand if you ever failed, like failed a test or been cut. Yeah, pretty much everybody. Oh, this, you guys are so honest today. That's wonderful. Uh, you've experienced failure. You've maybe uh, used the wrong fork or something, or you've uh, been impatient with a two-year-old or... You know, we, we've had failure. We all can identify with that. But think about the situation. The disciples are in this boat, and yes, the boat might be in trouble, but it's a whole lot safer than getting out of the boat at that time. It's a place of comfort, of security, of safety. And who wants to get out in a storm with high waves and strong winds? But if you don't get out of the boat, you can't walk on water. You've probably heard that phrase before. You can't experience what it's like unless you're willing to get out of the boat. And is it possible that, that there's something inside? Maybe you have experienced this, maybe you've felt this before, that God is actually drawing something out of you, that he's calling you to something more than just sitting safely in the boat, 
that he wants you to get out of the routine and, and, and get out of your comfort zone and be willing to, to step out and into this great adventure that God has for you? Have you ever experienced that? Yes. So Peter experienced this and uh, Jesus comes to the disciples and everybody's terrified of course and and what does he say he says don't be afraid it's I you don't have to be afraid I am able to save you I am the competent one my character is such in which you can trust in me I can pilot this thing it's okay and you might think that this storm is really powerful it is it's really powerful isn't it but you know what it doesn't even compare to my power not even close I am able to save you and so Peter says all right Lord if it really is you then tell me what to do tell me and Jesus says okay Peter get out of the boat so imagine in the midst of this crazy storm Peter actually takes his leg and he starts putting it over the edge of the boat and he feels the water, the waves behind. And then he takes his other leg and puts it on the other side of the boat. And now all of a sudden he's placing his whole weight in the water that's raging all around him. And what happens? He stands up. And so not only is he standing up, he takes a step. And for the first time in all of history, the mortal man is now beginning to walk on water. But then all of a sudden he realizes what he's doing, of course. And he sees the water, and he sees the storm, and he takes his eyes off of Jesus, and he starts to sink. So did Peter fail? Well, in one sense, yes, he did. His faith faltered. He looked elsewhere. He took his eyes off of Jesus. That He, he had this lock on Jesus that for a while, but then, then he got distracted, and he was wondering whether this storm really was too powerful and God couldn't be able to save him. Could Jesus really be uh, able to be trusted in the midst of this storm or not? I'm not really too sure, and so he started to falter. And so in that sense, did Peter fail? Yes, he did. But there were 11 other bigger failures in the boat. We don't talk about that very often, do we? We don't think about that because they're, these are kind of a silent failure. We don't, they're quiet, they're unnoticed, they're not really being criticized for this, but there's 11 other disciples that didn't even attempt to get out of the boat. Only Peter experienced the shame, uh, this public shame of, of this failure. But you know what? It was only Peter that actually had the experience of walking on water. It was only Peter that had the joy and the glory of knowing what it's like to follow Jesus and experience that power. And it was only Peter that truly knew what it was like when he started to falter and started to lose his faith in Jesus and started to sink into the water when Jesus grabbed his arm and picked him up. Only Peter knew that it was what it was like to know that even when I fail, Jesus is powerful enough to pick me up and draw me to himself. Peter had a moment that the disciples didn't experience because they didn't get out of the boat. Now perhaps you're wondering, what does it mean to get out of the boat? Maybe you even think it sounds exciting. Okay, I'm all on board. Let's, let's go ahead. Let's get out of the boat. But what does it mean? Well, at the heart of it really is simply to be a disciple of Jesus. That's the heart of it. The heart of it is to, to believe and follow him. Not just to believe in a sense that I, I'm hoping to, to make it to heaven if I believe a certain number of things, but it's really to place your trust in Jesus, to allow him to be the pilot of your life, to put your full weight into him, and to know that he is going to save you even when storms rage. To make that commitment, to take that risk, and to follow Jesus. What a disciple says is this. A disciple says, it is my ultimate goal to live the way that Jesus would live if he were inside of me, if he were in my body. A non-disciple has some other goal. A real disciple is somebody that says, I'm going to live the way Jesus would live if he was born in me. 
And that's why you, go, you don't drift into discipleship. You don't accidentally become mature in Christ. It is a decision that you make. It is a risk that you take. It is that faith decision to step out of the boat and into the unknown, trusting Christ for your life. Today we are welcoming four individuals into membership. And in many ways, they have stepped out of the boat. They are declaring publicly that they have made a decision for Christ and also a decision to make a commitment to this church body. Now, maybe the waters aren't as rough as we might think, but it is still a decision that is being made, and they're indicating that they want to grow in Christ. And whenever there is growth, there is new territory. And whenever there is new territory, there is the, the unknown. This is the scary part. It is, it's a risk because there's some fear involved. And so that's another description or another characteristic of being a disciple is that we renounce comfort. We're not content to stay in the boat, but we're ready to step out of the boat into the territory that God wants me to go, even when it takes a risk. So we don't want, in other words, we don't want to be boat potatoes like the other 11 disciples. Boat potatoes, couch potatoes, you know that phrase. You know, the place, they're in a place of comfort. They're, I'm not going to get out. Who wants to do that when you can stay in the security and safety and, and, and warm and cozy? This is where I want to stay. This is our natural bent. This is where we, if, you're, if we're going to drift anywhere, that's where we're going to drift. Drift towards comfort, not towards getting out of the boat. And so the question for you today is, have you chosen comfort over risk? Maybe you've noticed that in yourself, that the desire, the, the natural movement of my life is towards comfort as opposed to trusting in Christ, letting him be the pilot. Maybe you're afraid to take the next step. You're afraid that God's going to ask you to do something that you don't want to do. But Jesus says this, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. He is competent. His character is such in which we can trust in him. Let's pray together. As we pray, we just want to allow God to speak to you this morning. What is it that he is communicating to you today? What does he want to draw out of you? Maybe you can identify with the disciples in a boat that are just hanging on for dear life, hanging on to comfort and to security. And so you can pray something like this. Dear God, I confess that my desire is for comfort more often than my willingness to risk. I'm not always sure that I can trust you to save me when I start sinking. So I ask for your forgiveness. God, I ask that you would help me take the next step that you want me to take. And maybe it is to get baptized, or maybe it is to become a member, or to join a life group, or maybe it means you're calling me to start reading your word regularly and listening to your voice. Whatever it is, God, I pray that you would help me take that next step, get out of the boat, and trust in you. And so, God, I thank you for the example of Peter, that even though he took his eyes off of you when he was on the water, he at least was willing to take the risk and to come to you. And so I ask that you would help me not only to take that risk, but also to keep my eyes on you, to keep my eyes locked on you, so much so that I will not, e will not even notice the storm raging around me. Because you are my security, you are my confidence, my hope, and my salvation and I place my trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.